Earl Kane grew up a farm boy in southwest Louisiana. His father oversaw German POWs, had them pour concrete for miles building new roads, but when the war was over, for his kindness and compassion, the POWs gave Mr. Kane a concrete statue. That spoke volumes to his son. Together with a Bible-believing mother and their country church, Earl Kane was bound to find a way to help others. But he arrived in corrections as incarcerations skyrocketed. In 1972, just over 200,000 prisoners were locked up in American jails, but by 2014, that number had shot to over a million and a half. Another 700,000 are in county jails on any given day, with some 12 million grinding through the system each year. Inmate deaths jumped to 3,500 in 2013. That's the highest number on record. Inmate suicides, over 300 a year. 113 corrections officers were killed in the last decade, with over 125,000 injured. Corrections absenteeism is now more than four times the national average, and the divorce rate, one in two. The last place Burl Kane wanted to go was to Louisiana's notorious state penitentiary at Angola. For a century, it had been called America's bloodiest prison, with inmate murders nearly every night. Federal judges declared states of emergency as late as 1989. In 1995, Warden Burl Kane assumed responsibility for some 6,000 prisoners in an area the size of Manhattan. He had to make Angola pay for itself, and he also had to mandate rehabilitation all at the same time. Secular programs taught anger management and learning a trade to those who basically had no hope of leaving. Education alone, he found, only made a smarter criminal. What really needed to change was the heart, starting with his own. The first time in my life that I really felt that God talked to me was here, but it was also the first time in my life that I was desperate enough to listen. The whole deal was, if I could make a moral, I could heal the prison. We found a morality in religion because in our culture, you find morality quicker in religion than anywhere else. And I'm desperate for morality real quick. Now, the cool thing about moral rehabilitation is everybody from every group, atheist or what have you, wants people to be moral and they want them to rehabilitate. So those two words could find no enemies. Turn in your textbook, please, to 151. Jesus is talking... With Cain calls it moral rehabilitation. Pell grants for prisoners were banned just as Cain took over Angola, so he invited the accredited four-year program at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary to come teach at their own expense, and not just teach, but teach love in a prison. The majority of prisoners did not enroll, but violence plummeted. Inmates saw themselves in the redemption story because nearly all of Christ's disciples wound up as prisoners. Out of that came a message of hope that love did prevail and that forgiveness was the ultimate freedom. Earl Cain showed them the way to peace. He, this is not just some philosophical thing for him. He did this stuff, right? He was a warden in a maximum security prison. So he knows what he's doing. You don't want people it, you know, you, basically, you're not going to get any recognition when you're doing things in prison, unless he mentioned two things, unless there's some type of violence or an escape, or if you're changing lives. But in this setting, you have the opportunity to see God do things in ways that you've never seen before. You have the opportunity to see that God is still every bit as much at work in this world as he, as he ever has been in the history of the church. So we have uh, a correction system that's designed to incarcerate, rest restrain people, but not to transform people. And so it's that transformation that I think is essential. You think that revival can actually start in prisons? Unquestionably. Some of God's greatest work as we look through the Old and New Testament has already begun in prison. We have uh, the Apostle Paul yeah. uh, who has written the prison epistles. Uh, some of God's 
the most incredible work came from the most unlikely places, the most unlikely people. And that's something that he's still continuing to do today. So is this the solution? As states run out of money for prisons, while courts throw more in prison, everyone can see the coming crisis. Earl Kane found that solution in Global Prison Seminaries Foundation after 22 years of turning what had been America's largest, bloodiest prison into a model of peace. A five-year study by Baylor University said simply, it works. Kane found he had known the answer all along, since childhood. Simple compassion taught by parents in a country church. Well, Angola, the, the, the warden down there, Burl Kane, uh, he, he was probably the best warden uh, in the history of our country. Uh, he turned that Angola prison, which was the, the worst prison in America, the bloodiest prison in America, and he turned that, that whole prison completely around, and it was really the Christians uh, in the state of Louisiana that helped Burl Kane. Mm -hmm.